Okay, so we've covered off sales, we've covered off marketing. Let's talk about managing teams. What are your thoughts, trends, predictions around managing teams in 2019? Um, a kind of a twofold answer. The first part is just from a logistics and a, and a technology standpoint, things are getting easier. Uh, so many of us are now using Google, uh, Google, Google everything, right? You've got Google <laughs> Drive, Google Meetup, but all these different ways to help collaborate. Um, I know that uh, we're members of Rex Roundtable mm -hmm. and uh, they use Slack and Slack is another tool. And Facebook is now putting up, um, I believe it's called Workplace by Facebook, but it's a new tool. So ah. same sort of thing where it allows, allows people to get together to collaborate online so it's efficient, manage projects, share information, put it into different categories. But from a technological standpoint, I think that's the way things have to move because, again, in a hyper-competitive industry that's always changing, that requires a lot of collaboration and a lot of people being on the same page, you've got to get involved in that technology trainer. You're going to fall far behind your competitors. On the flip side, on, again, the more the human side of it, uh, you know, when my, my parents both got jobs and they worked because they got paid to do it and they did what they were told and they worked from nine to five. The world has changed. We all know that. Um, people are, have a deeper, and by the way, this is not like a shot of my parents. They're awesome people. Love you. Love you, mom. Uh, hopefully you're watching. Shout out. All right, shout out to Mama Stevenson. Um, but, you know, now I think you have, even with the millennials, you know, people are looking for more meaning, for deeper meaning in what they're doing. So I think you're going to see more of a trend where instead of just setting up rules and, hey, here's how you do your technical job and here's what we need from you, it's going to be more about how can we empower these people to do more in the front line? How can they have more decision-making ability? How can uh, we have them participate? And that's one thing we focused on is how can we get our people participating more where they have more opinions? So we do things like a start, stop, continue survey. So we do that with our staff. What do we start doing that we're not doing for you? What do we stop doing that's just annoying the heck out of you and not helping with your job? And what are we doing well that we should keep doing? So finding ways to have them participate in your facility, they get more ownership. So when they have ownership, they're part of the decision making. There's a bigger buy-in and they do a better job and they also feel more fulfilled being a part of that. Yeah, I love that start, stop, continue. That is such a good uh, suggestion, Chris. And I would love to hear for everyone that's on the line this morning because the first thing that you just mentioned was a lot of these online systems that you, people are using for project collaboration. I know for uh, the podcast we use Basecamp, absolutely love it. You mentioned Slack. So, guys, I would love to know what you guys are using for collaboration and even what you're using for things like file sharing. I mean, we use Dropbox, which is really handy. I know people use Google Drive. So just hit me up in the comments below let me know if there are any particular systems that you use and that you recommend that you find are really useful for you for your fitness business for um for the industry nathan i think we were talking the other day you're using google hangouts or something so guys hit me up in the comments below and just let me know what you're using and don't forget as you're going through, and thank you so much for all of you that are showing Chris some, uh, some Facebook Live love right now. I've been seeing the love hearts and the likes go up, but there's something that Chris talks about that you love the sound of. Make sure you hit that like button or hit that love button and show us some love. Okay, let's keep going, Chris. So we've done marketing, sales, managing teams. Let's talk about retention and customer service. What are your thoughts on this area? Uh, two topics that go really well together. We've always been a very member experience focused facility. We believe that's the most important thing. That's what our whole mission, uh, vision and values revolve around. So we've always been on board with that, but that plays into retention because the better the experience you can create, you're going to retain people. But from a trend standpoint, you've got a couple of different things. Again, technology is just an overarching trend that we've talked about in almost every category. Um, but things like uh, implementing wearables like MyZone, for example. Uh, MyZone is an incredible tool that allows members to get involved in challenges which are fun and exciting makes it a little competitive it uh allows them to you know obviously you know everything but track their maps achieve statuses brings everybody together as a community so doing things like that where you're figuring out new technology that just helps bond people tighter together and allows them to have more fun and see the results that they're getting that's the other nice thing is uh, like with my zone for example uh results in fitness take time so somebody purchases a membership and they're like all i got was this key tag or not anymore. Now I just got uh, an app so I can scan them anymore, right? Uh, so true. This amount of calories earn this many effort points. So that's things like that are going to just become more prevalent and more essential for that retention. Um, we use a, we're experimenting right now with TRP, which is a company that I love. They have a, uh, a feature called engage. And basically what it does is it tracks people's usage patterns. And uh, what it does is it alerts you on the screen. It's new to us. So I apologize if I'm not. Uh, you can just describe it as yeah, you Yeah, just describe know it in general. As you right. know it, but yeah. So ba basically it ranks members on a potential to cancel. 
so here's a high risk, here's a low risk, here's, here's somebody who's safe. And it allows you to then focus on particular members. Obviously, you want to take care of everyone at all times. But this shows that maybe this person needs a little extra attention or a little extra reach out. So it's live time while they're in your facility. Your staff can then log in what they've done to interact with that member so you can keep a history of how we're treating this person so we can take better care of them. So I think it's really cool. And the technology, the technology aspects, too, is uh, – and I always say this when I present. It, it has to be altruistic. So sometimes you hear a system, right, like, well, we can track uh, your base level of the potential to cancel and uh, decide – well, no, we interact with everybody, but – we miss people or maybe somebody's not getting the love that they feel they need. So again, mm -hmm. things like that TRP engage are phenomenal for figuring out who those people are who need that extra love because if we keep them coming in, they get healthy. So I, I just think the implementation of those are just two examples of the awesome technology. Uh, you know, facial recognition is huge now. Uh, and I think some of that stuff allows you then to focus on the human element when you can have a more of an automatic check-in your staff's not so busy doing the physical part of the check-in. They can simply stand there, service the member, and engage with them. So I think yeah. technological trends stay on top of them. Don't fall behind. And also, uh, when technology takes over in certain areas, it allows you then your team to just totally focus on taking great care of people. Yeah, back to that customer service. So um, yeah. question for you. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know if you know the answer to this. Do you know of any fitness businesses that are using um, the facial recognition or like things like Beacon Technology? Have you heard of anyone doing it at this stage? Um, you know, there's, uh, I think it's called Tanakh, which is a, is a, is a Group X type yeah. uh, technology that they're doing at the NAC. Yep. And we talked a little bit about that with some of the people that work there. And it's fantastic. You can tell who takes class, how long they're at the gym. I mean, you can just okay. get all We, we need so Jim or Kate to jump on the line. Yes. So if someone's listening and they can invite yeah. them on, maybe, um, maybe Kate might be available to come on and tell us about what they're doing with Yeah, the Tanakh, Tanakh. thing we, we talked for. And we talked to Phil Bonimo, who works for them as well, and uh, just, just Thank blew you, us Marissa. away. I'm glad you spelled that because I was thinking, I wonder how that's T-I-N-O-Q. Yeah, okay, I was cool. hoping I, pron I pronounced it right. That was the biggest thing for me. I, I can't tell you. But <laughs> what I can say, guys, is if that's something that you want to know more about, just um, copy what Marissa's just write, written in the, uh, in the comments and uh, we might see if we can get Kate or one of the team on to, uh, from the NAC to talk about that. That's really cool. Thank you. Um, just really quickly before we move on, because you know I can't have a do a, a broadcast without mentioning my zone. Because you said right <laughs> up the front about Emma, if you're still on the line, give give me a little love heart or say hi so that I know you're there. And Deb, I know you were part of our challenge as well. So um, just to share with you guys really quickly, we had a challenge in January where um, we kind of got a group of fitness industry professionals from all across the world involved in a first to five thousand MEPS challenge. And I don't know, like Marissa, you're you're watching as well, and you've been an absolute machine in this like the motivation that it gave us as fitness professionals to get active and to move every day and to interact with each other was just second to none and to me i think you know if it gives fitness professionals people that already love love exercising if it gives us that motivation that connection then the power that it has for our members is phenomenal fitness freaks deborah said um Chris, <laughs> i know that you use my zone in the club any examples of how you've been able to use it um specifically to um to help with member attention in your club yeah well what's interesting is again we are i mean the whole industry is competitive we are in probably one of the most competitive areas that i've ever seen when we opened our club the current club i this is the second version of the club we have uh it was almost eight or it was just over eight years ago we had i think it was like five or six competitors within a five mile radius and now literally we have over a hundred uh, literally over a hundred competitors That's crazy. so we knew that we had to do something to keep people engaged because Although people love us and we have a high net promoter score and we do a good job on the experience side, you got to keep people interested and engaged. So for us, it was adding something brand new. Uh, we have a fairly high active user rate as well that we knew our members would get behind. The key to it for us is we only recently launched it with members, but we launched it with our staff. So what we did is we did a big staff challenge and, the, and we would only the staff would wear it. We'd take classes, you know, we'd do small group and it'd be up on the screens and members are watching us. So they're getting oh, all intrigued cool. by it. Yeah, so like it was a very that. cool way to launch it. Then we did the yeah. honor board in the staff challenge, and every, a member actually came up and said, how come there's no members participating? I said, because it's only for the staff right now. And they're like, wait, what? When does ours start? But it's, it's just it's super fun. It's motivating. What you mentioned about the challenge um, for me is uh, I love lifting. Like I could lift all day long. You don't get a ton of MEPS lifting, mm -hmm. right? True. So it motivated me. So as a guy who needs to do more cardio and should be doing more cardio, I'm like, you know what? I got an extra 15 minutes. I'm going to do sprints on the bike. 
I get home from work and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to skip the beer and I'm going to run intervals on a treadmill <laughs> because I got to get more meps because if my name's not in the next column on the board, I failed. So it really, like you said, even for a fitness enthusiast, it's motivating as can be. Yeah. We, yeah. We, lo we love it. Yeah, that is awesome. Thank you for sharing that example. Okay.